G'day guys, how is it going? Welcome once again to the Tripod, where we break down every single NFL game every week from a punting perspective, <clears throat> doing things a little bit differently this week. Obviously, this is not a Saturday morning pod, this is not a Friday evening pod. There are three games tomorrow in the NFL. It's Thanksgiving Day in America on the Thursday, which is their Thursday tomorrow, our Friday. So um, yeah, make sure you have got the turkey ready to go. Uh, there are going to be three games tomorrow, um, so make sure you try and get the day off work because Thanksgiving Day football, what could be better than that? We're trying to turn this season around, and I think um, we've got to play. Well, no, I don't think. I know we have a play on every single one of the Thanksgiving Day games. Some leans a little bit stronger than others, uh, but we do like a side in every one of the Thanksgiving games. So, Let's get right to it, guys. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter pod, obviously, only three games, and Jacob won't be joining me on the pod today. I will let you guys know this is pre-recorded. What do we have here? We have 3 p.m. on the Thursday, so hopefully these lines don't move too much between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. when we're going to post this, but um, at least you'll know the sides that we like, etc. We just couldn't manage to do a live pod at 6 p.m. tonight, me and Jacob are both going to be busy doing other stuff, so we thought we would pre-record this one, and at least you guys get to hear our thoughts on all three of the NFL games tomorrow. First up, we have the Bears laying 5.5 points at the Detroit Lions. 37 points is the total, the lowest total of the round, and certainly for good reason. The Bears' defense is legit, and they have been struggling offensively. On the Lions' side, the defense is... Well below average, as we know, they can leak points. Um, we saw them absolutely capitulate against the Redskins for a loss last week. 16-13 up in the fourth quarter, and then just absolutely capitulate and, and give up a field goal drive, throw an interception in the final minute, and then let Dwayne Haskins drive the field for, for the game-winning field goal for the Redskins. So the Lions stick a fork in them. They are done. They were done a long time ago. They are 3-7. and seven. The season's over, and that might just be the back-breaking kind of deflating loss to a shitty Redskins team that only had one win prior to that, that the Lions need to just give up on the season. Now, on the Bears' side, we know that they are not great. They haven't been great. They've copped a lot of shit this year, and no one more so than Mitch Trubisky. But let's not forget, they are 5-6, and six, and, and I know that most people out there, including myself, know that the Bears aren't going to make the playoffs, but I think that they should still believe that they could possibly make the playoffs. They're five and six. If they turn this season around and go, you know, ten and six from their perspective, or even nine and seven, then they have a, a legit chance of making the playoffs here. On the Lions side, obviously, you lose Matt Stafford a few weeks ago. Jeff Driscoll comes in and he does a job for that Lions team. He's been pretty legit, obviously, last week. Uh, not notwithstanding, that was a pretty bad performance there. But Jeff Driscoll's out this week, so you're on to your third string QB. His name is David Blow, and he is starting his first NFL game against the Bears. And granted, yes, it is at home, but it's going to be a very, very tough situation here. He was a backup QB at P Purdue for his first three years. He started in his final year, but this is not a five-star recruit. This guy is a three-star recruit, and I'm not expecting much from David Blow against this top five Bears defense. So I really think with the Bears, I know it's a lot of points to lay away from home, but I think they're the better team here. They have much more motivation. And I just have that inkling that after last week's loss against the Skins, this Lions team has possibly given up on the season. So we've got a couple of best bets on the Bears here. We're going to take them laying the four points. That is $1.84 on Unibet. We're also going to take the Bears laying two and a half points in the first half, that is $1.83 on Unibet. Moving on to what is probably the best game of tomorrow. Uh, to, at least it's involving two teams that are still well and truly in the playoff hunt. It's the Buffalo Bills plus 6.5 at the Dallas Cowboys. 47 points is the total. I know that everyone has been saying all year, okay, the Buffalo Bills, they don't deserve to be 6-3. and three. They don't deserve to be 7-3. and three. They don't deserve to be 8-3. and three. They've got a cupcake schedule, all this shit. And I understand that the Bills haven't played the toughest schedule so far, but going 8-3 and three and beating some half-decent teams along the way, they have looked impressive. And a 20-3 to three win over the Broncos last week. I get that the Broncos aren't contenders, 
Um, but just shutting them out like that is very impressive. And this Bills defense is legit. On the other hand, this Cowboys team, I know Jacob disagrees with me a little bit, but this Cowboys team is below average. Um, their offense has been keeping them in games. And most of the games that they have played have been shootouts, obviously, bar the Pat Patriots game last week. And look, you look at that game, I know they only lost by four points. And a lot of people are going to point at that game and say, okay, the refs cost the Cowboys the win there. And they were bad tripping calls, not one, but two of them. Um, and I do feel bad for the Cowboys. But look, at the end of the day, you know, you had a chance to go and tie the game down 17-10. Um, you choose to kick a field goal in, in torrential rain um, at 17-10 uh, down. I think that, that was the wrong decision. But as we know, the Clapper is a terrible coach and he's made many wrong decisions in his life. But look, I know the Cowboys only lost by four points, but I really don't think that it was as close as that or it should have been as close as that. I thought the Pats were much better. I just thought that the Pats dropped a lot of passes. So many passes the Patriots dropped if you watch that game. Um, and, and that's why it helps to kind of watch the full games, which we do every single week. But the Pats dropped so many passes in that game, they should have been up by much more. And I know it was terrible weather, um, but <clears throat> this Cowboys team has not been as impressive lately as people probably think that they are. Um, now Jerry Jones is coming out and making bad statements about the coach. Um, which cannot help behind the locker room. That's all a distraction for mine. And we know that Amari Cooper has not been fully healthy this season. Um, so, look, laying a touchdown at home, I get that the Cowboys at home and they have a decent home field advantage, but the difference between these two teams is a lot closer than I think this line suggests. So I would not be surprised if the Bills come very close to winning this game, if not win this game outright. So getting the full touchdown, I think we have to do it. Therefore, we are taking three best bets on this one. We're taking the Bills plus seven points. That is, well, we're making a mechanical plus seven. Uh, it ends up being $1.82. How we're going to do it is 58% of our stake on the Bills plus seven and a half points. That one you'll find on sports bet in the alt market at $1.72. And we're going to put the remaining 42% of our stake on the Bills plus six and a half points. That one is $1.96 on sports bet. Look, if you don't want to go through the hassle of doing both of those um, and, and dividing up your stake at 58% and 42%, feel free to just play either of those individually. I think both of those bets are fairly good as standalone bets as well. Next up, we'll take the Bills team total over 19.5 points. That one is $1.80 on Bet365. And we'll take the Cowboys team total under 27.5 points. That one is also $1.80 on Bet365. And the last game tomorrow is the Saints laying 6.5 points at the Atlanta Falcons. 48.5 points is the total. Well, we all know what happened, or we can all remember what happened three weeks ago when these two teams faced. The Saints were fresh off a bye, high hopes for them, Drew Brees playing, and the Falcons absolutely destroyed them 26-9. The Saints could not get anything going, and the Falcons' defense suddenly turned from the third worst defense in the league to a league-beating fucking defense. And everyone said, oh my God, this Falcons defense, they've turned it around, they've made a couple of changes in terms of um, you know coach, coaching and that sort of stuff. And now all of a sudden, this Falcons defense is world beaters. And then they kept saying that the week after. And then me and Jacob in last week's pod, we said, look, this Falcons defense isn't it hasn't just turned around from a bottom five defense to a top five defense in the space of two weeks. And we saw what happened last week. They give up 37 points against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Granted, Winston did play well, but this Falcons defense is nothing to be, you know, scared of, I don't believe. Anyway, the Saints are rolling. They've got a lot to play for here. Number, you know, number one and two seeds up for grabs there in the NFC. So I think they're, you know, they're going to be hungry for this one. I think that the Falcons, you know, were playing for their win streak last week, three in a row, um, but that's over now. So the Falcons have very little to play for. Not only that, they're pretty banged up as well. Austin Hooper, their tight end, is going to be out for this game. Julio Jones picked up a shoulder injury in last week's game, and he has been pretty much not practicing at all all this week. And um, the, the coaching staff has said that he's going to, they're going to let it go right down to game time before making a decision on Julio Jones. And look, you know, if I was the Falcons, he's your best player. You probably would let him sit. They're not going to make the playoffs this season. So I wouldn't be surprised if Julio Jones doesn't play in this game. Uh, not only that, the Saints, recent revenge as well. These guys played three weeks ago, as I said. 
Um, the Falcons tore them to shreds. The Saints couldn't get anything going. And now we have, you know, when, when a team gets beat up on their own home ground, like the Saints did, um, the, the revenge factor, especially if it's within the last month, is very strong. So um, I do expect the Saints to get the job done here. Not only that, you've got lucky win theory as well. Getting that lucky win over the Panthers last week, I think, will help confidence there with the Saints. I mean, you know, the Panthers fucked that one up royally, missed two field goals, missed the final one, and then let the Saints drive all the way down for the game-winning field goal. Um, So I like the Saints here. I, I think that they could absolutely obliterate the Falcons, even at home. So we've got four best bets. It's the most of any game this week, but me and Jacob both agreed this was our strongest lean of the week. So we are taking the Saints laying six points. That one is a dollar eighty one on Unibet. We're going to take the Falcons team total under twenty two points. That's at a dollar eighty two in the Bet Easy three way market. So it's essentially the Falcons under twenty one and a half. We'll take the Saints halftime full time. So it'll be winning at halftime and at full time. It's a dollar eighty three on Bet three six five. And we'll also take the Saints Race to 25 points. That one is $1.81 on Unibet. Um, what I'll do is I'll probably wait until this pod. I'm, I'm going to schedule this one for 6. So if you're watching this, it is probably 6.10, 6.15 at the moment. So um, right after this gets done, I'll try and post all of these in the Tripod app and in our group. But make sure you're in either one of those. Guys, we're turning around the season. I really like these three tomorrow. So uh, yeah, if you can't get the Friday off, get it off. Call in sick. Watch these three games because I think two will be absolute crackers, and just don't get up early for the Bears-Lions game, because that one will be a poop fest, but um, you'll have a bet on it, so why not? Thanks again for watching, guys, and uh, we'll be back. Uh, I think we're still going to stick to Saturday morning, 10 a.m., for our breakdown of the rest of Round 13, but if anything changes and we decide to do that on Friday night, we'll let you know either in the Tripod app or in the Tripod Punters Tips Forum group on Facebook. So uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and we will see you for the rest of the breakdown of round 13 on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. unless you hear from us. Good luck on the punt.